Hey friends, welcome. Today we're making coffee stencils. This thing is so stinking cute. A few weeks ago, I had did a tutorial on DIY embossing folders. I am obsessed with making my own embossing folders and texture plates, but I am also not a crafter that just likes to get a material and only use it for one particular craft. So I wanted to reduce, reuse, and recycle on how to make something else out of the same material that the texture plates are made out of. And I have figured it out with these really cute latte stencils. I absolutely love them. And I cut this out on my Glowforge. Now you can cut it on your, um, on your Cricut or your silhouette as well. Uh, but for this video, we are going to use it on our Glowforge. Um, with that being said, I am using Inkscape to make this this right here, this stencil right here. Now I've seen a lot of people use a coffee bean or carrots or for a custom coffee shop or a barista. You can do anything. It's really just a stencil and all you're going to do is, is you're going to make the stencil, lay this on the top, shake. I did um, hot cocoa and cinnamon and cinnamon worked out a little bit better, but I have, I do know people that have used hot cocoa and they had better success. I did not, I failed at it. But hot cocoa worked, or uh, cinnamon worked great for this and it makes like a really cute, fun project. And I mean, who would not like to wake up if you're getting proposed to and say, marry me? How cute. Okay, so let's get started on this Inkscape tutorial. We are not going to import any images. All we're going to use is, is what is in Inkscape and the font that you have on your um, computer. Okay, so when you open up Inkscape, you get this small little um, workstation table canvas. I don't even know what to call it, but it's small. It's like eight and a half by 11. I always like to make it bigger. Uh, because we're using the Glowforge, I always like to make it the Glowforge bed size, which is 12 by 20 or 20 by 12. So go up to file and do document properties. And then I'm gonna switch this over into inches. And then this custom size right here, we're gonna make this 20 by 12. 20 inches wide by 12 inches high. That's the bed size of the Glowforge. So I'm just gonna exit out of that and now it's like a lot bigger. I didn't need to make it bigger, it's just a personal preference and I wish they would just let me save it this way. Okay, so to make this little guy, all you're gonna need is a circle. So just click this little circle thing and I have made it four inches big. So going over into the inches, into the uh, di uh, dimensions and just making this, did I make it four, five inches or four inches? I don't know. Let's get my ruler. I did make it four inches. I don't know why I all of a sudden just second guessed myself. So we're making this four inches. And then you are gonna wanna duplicate that because we have another little thing up here. The reason for that is when, and I don't have a coffee cup up here. Oh wait, I do have a coffee cup. The hoard is real in this office. <laughs> I do have a random coffee cup. Why? Well, I have no idea. It's never been used. Okay, so the reason why you wanna add this little lip on the top of it is when you lay your coffee down, the stencil down, if you lay it down there, it, it will be hard to lift off. And what you're wanting is, is when you shake your, um, your cinnamon or hot cocoa, you wanna lift straight up. So if you don't have like something to hold on to, to lift up, it might be difficult. So that's why we wanna add just a little lip just to lift up. So you wanna duplicate this. Uh, for Mac users, it's Command D. Um, I don't know what it is on the Apples or on Macintosh, but, or is that what we call them still? PCs. <laughs> okay. Um, so if you don't, if you're on a PC, just click on it and then press object and where is it at? Oh, it's in edit and then duplicate. It looked like nothing happened. Don't worry. Something did. Then you just want to press control and you want to just make this smaller and we're going to drag this up. It doesn't really matter what size you make it. You just want to have a little bit of a lip going on and we're going just to put it up so there's just a little lip 
I am not going to weld this together yet, just yet, because I want to work on the font first. I want to make sure that is center to everything. And if you weld it together, then it's going to complicate things. So let's just leave this alone. But you got, you got the point. Okay, now what we want to do is add in Marry Me. So do your text box. Just click inside the circle. Don't worry. We'll change that in a second. And we're going to put Marry Me. The font that I'm doing for this is called Bebas, B-E-B-A-S, and just press apply. Okay, there it is right there. Now go back into your arrow, click your arrow. It's going to make that, te that text box like a movable text box, and we're gonna make it a little bit bigger. And we're just going to move that. Now with the text box, select the text box and that bigger circle and go into your align tool at the very top and do center, horizontal and vertically. Now Mary Me is completely in the center of this thing, which is perfect. That's exactly what you wanted. Okay, so if you were to go and do, let's, Let's weld this. This circle, now that we have it center, we'll do this circle and this circle, and then we'll go up to path and union. And now you have the, now you have this entire outside and you're missing that line that's right here. That's perfect, because you don't want that. You want it to cut all the way around. That's exactly what you want. Okay, let's duplicate this real quick. Okay, technical difficulties, my word. I figured it out. All righty, so this is what you wanna do. Make this a path, to make this a path, you want to select that, go into path and go object to path, and then you want to go over into edit and press ungroup, wherever that's at. We'll just right click. We'll right click and press ungroup. And then when it's done in grouping, then you want to go back up into path and press union. That is making all these individual texts into a cut file together. Now what you want to do is select this and select your bigger circle and then go into path and press difference. My gosh, now we're here. Okay, if you were to leave it the way that you, that you leave it and you cut this, you are going to miss out on this A, this inside of the R, and this inside of the R. So if you can tell with mine right here, there is like a small little thing right here, here, and here. And that's because if I didn't attach that to anything, they would just fall out and then you would be left with, well, I don't wanna break it, but you'd be left with an A that does not have a center, which would look weird. Okay, so now all you're doing is gonna go in and just select this square tool. And I am going to unclick over here on this in snapping thing. It's quite obnoxious to have it on there. I never use it. So just disable it. And then you're gonna want to just make a box. Doesn't matter where for right now, but you just wanna make a box and you want it to be, now the ones that I did on this one is very thin very thin and I had to cut a few in order to make this one perfect. So I don't suggest making it that thin, but I, would, I wouldn't make it overly big either because then after you're done, when you shake it out, then you'll be able to see it. So I got one here and I'm just gonna duplicate, which is Command D again. And I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna do that. And then do one more for the other R. Now, if you had other letters that like a D that was going to be missing the, the center, you're gonna wanna do the same thing. Anytime you are dealing with a letter that is gonna lose its center, this is, the, this is what you want for a stencil. Okay, so we are going to select all the boxes that you just created and press path and union, that's putting it together. And then you want to create, and then you wanna do all three of those. Click on your stencil, the bigger portion of it, and do path and then union again. 
And so now what you can see is, is that there, it's gonna cut around the A, which is exactly what you want right here. Maybe it's easier for you to see. There's like a little line here, here and here. It's essentially what you want. Um, and then all you're done, now you can delete this because we don't need to use that. And then you wanna save this, where I'm gonna save this as coffee stencil. I'm gonna save it to my desktop. And then we'll open it up into Glowforge and then we'll go from there. We're now in the Glowforge app. So then you just go up here to upload and you wanna up, find your file that you just created, click on that and just press upload. And then it will eventually get to where you want. Don't worry about resizing it because what you save it as is what the size is, it'll come right over. And then for the settings for this material, all settings are different on every machine, but a good start, starting point are the settings that I'm using. And if you go over here, press cut, instead of using like the Gen generic Glowforge setting because this isn't a uh, Glowforge material, it's something else. I always go into manual. 500 is the speed and my power I'm gonna do at 70. Don't click this back button. If you click back, then it'll revert back to the default settings, just click out. And so now right here, this setting says 500 to 70 and that's what you want. This thing should probably take like 30 seconds to a minute. It doesn't take very long, but then when you're done, you have a finished stencil. All right, y'all, I will see you later. Oh, it worked. Look at that.